Hey everybody, so I'm back with another video and this time I'm going to talk about crampons as promised in my last video. And so I have a selection of uh, footwear for crampons and I have a selection of crampons here. Um, there's like a million different types of crampons on the market. Um, so this is by no means is an all-inclusive video, but I'm going to show you the basic types of crampons that are made relative to the rigidity, the binding style, the application, and then the materials that they're made out of. And so I have three pairs of crampons right here that I'm going to talk about and use to demonstrate, but then there are other crampons that sort of bridge the gap, and then other crampons that I uh, may bring up that are kind of on either end of the spectrum. Like the, it would be around here, the ultra lightweight category, and then over here would be the ultra heavyweight ridiculous ice climber ones and so this will just be a basic video talking about the basic types of crampons and then uh, footwear that you can use to actually wear them and employ them so first thing i'm going to talk about are the materials and the spikes that they have on them now there are basically two different families in terms of how many uh spikes you have on the crampon or in the crampon world we call them points there's 10 point crampons and 12 point crampons 10 points are more that you see for uh, basic regular crampons and then the 12 points are more that you see on the more higher end styles uh, there are some crampons that even have like 14 points and then maybe 16 I'm not sure so these crampons are basic uh, 10 point crampons two four six eight ten right there uh, these are what we call full strap-on crampons because you can see this is the mirrored image right here I have a toe uh, strap in the front and then a heel strap in the back and this whole thing wraps around for the for lacing the crampon onto your boot this is a crampon that more or less depends fully on the straps to keep them on your feet rather than the fit so I forgot to mention that these are also generally made of aluminum which is a softer metal and it gets beaten down faster but um, Generally, these are crampons for snow climbing and snow walking and glacier travel on non-technical routes. So they compensate by that by being more lightweight than steel crampons, helps make you less tired. And um, they also aren't expected to be put up to too much abuse. Moving on to steel crampons. These guys are, like every point in here is made with steel. You can see how the points themselves are more jagged and rigid. These guys are just kind of like straight in because again more for walking these guys are more meant for climbing these are actually really good snow climbing crampons these two points are called front points right here this is a 12 point crampon two four six eight ten and twelve on each side and so that's kind of the common number uh, these two front points are actually sharper than these I know you can't really tell from the video actually with how doled out these are these points feel sharper at the moment. Uh, both these crampons would be nice for snow climbing because these front points right here are really flat and so that helps just get a bunch of snow under your point. But I've used these in ice climbing and mixed climbing plenty of times and they climb very well. At least like lower level stuff, you know, like what you would get in the alpine environment. So these are good all around crampons. But um, you can see the binding is a semi-automatic binding. So the toe right here is the toe strap, just like the last crampon, but instead of being a heel strap for this thing, we actually have a clip. And I'll show you how this clips onto a boot later in the video, but we also have two posts to help square your heel in the posts. And then you just clip this thing on and then run the strap around your ankle. The strap you will see is also much smaller than in those crampons because that strap doesn't have to go that far. And so that's sort of like the different setup right here. They work really well for three-quarter shank boots. You also hear these crampons as called pneumatic style crampons. I don't know where they got that name from, but if someone says pneumatic style, that's what they're referring to. And so it'd be really nice to use a pair of three-quarter shank boots because they don't have a toe bail, so you strap those right on. But they do have a heel bail, so that way you can clip this onto the heel. Moving on to higher end crampons right here. These are full water ice type crampons. They're very rigid, which means that there's not as much shake between the back, uh, the heel part and then the front part. 
You'll also see how the spikes are made differently. I'll pop that up. Here, I just mentioned these are super flat. This thing is like straight Darden razor blade. And so um, that's like you'll see on crampons that are designed for pure water ice climbing and dry tooling, they'll have a different style of front point right there. These also are called monopoint crampons. Uh, they make dual crampons with the same point or monopoint like this. Uh, and then there are a number of crampon uh, brands out there that actually switch back and forth between tool, dual or mono or whatever. And so um, that helps sort of, uh, you can mix and match. However, I hear that those types of crampons are a bit more heavy. You also see the binding on this is different from the last two because this front part is a metal bale. And then we have the same back clip right there. And so that means that this crampon is designed for a full shank boot. Here's my example of that. Like a La Sportiva Nepal because it has a heel, plastic heel bail and a plastic toe bail. So that means that it'll fit this crampon. These are the same sort of 12 point. Well, um, they're, uh, it's a 12 point design. Unless you have the mono point, then it's not quite 12, but that's generally what they come with. And then the same, you can see how serrated these uh, down points are compared to the last one. You see only one side serrated. Here it's like everything's serrated. And then even our really basic models, there's no serration at all, well, except for that little bit. Yeah, so that's kind of like the three main types of crampons you get. Strap-on, um, semi-automatic, and full automatic. These also do have different names. That's kind of how we refer to them in the States. But in Europe, you'll hear stuff like B1, B2, B3. And then that just sort of, again, implies to the train type where B1 is more walking, B2 is somewhat technical, B3 is as technical as it gets. I also want to bring to attention with the boots that you wear, boots that can handle the full technical crampons can handle any crampon. So like this guy that can, the Nepal that I mentioned could handle this full automatic crampon. There's no reason why you can't put a semi-automatic or a strap-on crampon on that boot. So if they can handle all different types of crampons, you can put all different types of crampons. Whereas the further down in footwear you get, the more specific crampons you have to employ. You would definitely not want to put this style of crampon on this style of footwear. Another thing I like to mention is storage for the crampons. Since they are really sharp, um, a number of companies make these crampon bags. And um, while when I go out with my crampons like on a climb, I never have them in the bag. I have them strapped to the backpack or inside the backpack because the bag just adds time and it's actually pretty weight uh, heavy and bulky. And so I just use them for when I'm storing my crampons at home or in the car, uh, I'll just put them in those bags. So it's kind of nice to think about is keeping your crampons away from all the other stuff that they can rip. So let's show you what it's like to put on a full automatic crampon. Now last time I wore these, I was using different boots, so I'm gonna have to resize them too, so I'll show you how to do that. But um, it's very important to uh, take into account that I'm using a full shank boot with a toe bail and a heel bail for this. So the way how I like to put these on is just lay them on the ground. I'm gonna take my big foot. I'm going to slide the toe bail in and now I can see actually that the crampon is too big for my foot because I can see these little heel posts right here and that should be more up further on the heel so I'm going to resize them and what I do is with this specific one is I can pull this out and then the center bar right here I can move it back and forth it does when you get a new pair of crampons it does take some time to dial in Make sure that you have your crampons right. Yeah, there you go. That fits much better now. So you can see that when I put my uh, foot in the crampon, I get the toe in right. I get the toe in right. There we go. And now my heel posts are basically holding my heel. Now this type of boot and La Sportiva boots in general tend to have a more narrow heel. And so it doesn't, 
exactly matter if the posts are like right flush with the heel, uh, but um, you want them at least a little close. And then what I'm gonna do is I got this little uh, clip right here. It should take a bit of force. There you go. That was actually kind of a lot of force. Um, maybe depending on what you're doing, you don't need to really push that hard. But since these are my dry tooling, hardcore ice climbing crampons, I like to have them a bit tighter than, uh, than other crampons. And so here I have them. Crampons are on my toe. Um, you can see how, if I look at it like this, get the strap out of here. You can see how the toe or the mono point is sticking out from my crampon, and um, everything's clipped in pretty well. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the strap. I find these two little key guys, and you want the this little pole strap should be the bottom link or the one that's closest to your foot, and then you should have a free ring right here. Make sure there's no twists in your straps and pass this through both and then just through one. There we go and then we'll just tighten it down. And now at this point, uh, to get rid of this little strap, I like to tuck it underneath. You can usually find some way how to tuck it underneath. There we go. And then for, I have this strap a little bit longer so I can use it with double boots, but for single boots, I'll do one. You see that? One full knot around, and then I usually do a second one. There you go, and then that keeps that strap nice and out of the way, and I don't accidentally step on it. I like doing the two overhand knots because that, um, even if the, like, I just find that it doesn't come untied. A lot of times, one overhand knot will work itself out, but if this one works itself out, I still have the strap under control until I get to the point where I can retie that second one. Another thing I want to quickly mention is that uh, you will notice how each crampon has a right and a left foot, and so they will have that little symbol right there. And then the actual curve of the crampon will be curving right or left uh, in conjunction with your foot. So make sure you put them on the right feet. Okay, so now let's talk about the semi-automatic crampon uh, with the toe bill in front and then the clip in back. Uh, for this, I'll be using a three-quarter shank boot because this is the most common combination I use this crampon uh, with is this boot. And so uh, with these boots, again, you want to go in toe first to try to... It's really important to make sure you get your toe right next to those posts because a lot of times when you clip the boot or clip the crampon into place, your boot will actually rise up and be above the posts, which is what we want to avoid. We want flush right in line with the posts. So there we go. Uh, looks like this crampon's already dialed in with this boot because my posts are looking really good. I'm gonna take my heel clip, clip it into place, and I can raise it up, shake it around even. What I'm gonna do with this strap right here is I got this little notch in the in the toe, so I'm going to make sure there's no twists. Go in through the toe, then bring it back to my uh, key system here. Pass it through two, back through one, the first one. Just tighten the whole thing down. Now these straps I actually haven't cut. If you do want to cut these straps, you can, uh, a lot of my friends use butter knives so they heat on the stove until it's really hot and slice through it. You can always just use a knife and a lighter too, but if it's this long, then I'm just going to tuck it back through my toe. There we go, and then I'm going to stick it underneath the strap again and tie another overhand knot. I'm going to bring it I'm gonna bring it back further to my heel, right there. Now I may choose to put in another overhand knot too, like having two overhand knots, but um, in this case, 
uh, I think I'd be fine. I think it, it would stay on pretty well. And so that's the semi-automatic crampon. This is probably the most versatile crampon. And I always use, I tend to use this semi-automatic style with this three-quarter shank boot for a lot of things. But a lot of times I will switch out for the aluminum 10-point crampon too. Mainly if I know I'm not really dealing with snow that much. If I am going to, if I'm worried about dealing with ice, then I'll go with this heavier duty style cramp on more than the aluminum one. But if I know I'm just snow climbing, a lot of times I'll just go with the aluminums. All right, let's talk about aluminum 10 point strap on cramp ons now. So when you're putting your foot in this cramp on, you're gonna start with your heel first, whereas the other two you started with your toe. Actually, it looks like this one's a little small for this boot. It means I must have used them with some different piece of footwear. So what I'm gonna do is this little uh, tab right here, it holds a pin in place, which allows you to move the spreader bar. Now when you pack these things away, you can see how this thing moves up. That's how you get the crunching down aspect, and then it folds out. But if you wanna actually expand the amount of space between the two plates right here with the spreader bar, is you go to here, lift this thing up, I'll flip it around, lift this thing up, and then you can move it in and out to like actually adjust the, um, the size of the crampon. Let's put it like right there. Then from this point, it's just guess and check. All right, and then a cool thing about these crampons is you can size them to the point where you know they're fitting well if you actually can lift up the foot and then the crampon doesn't fall off even without the straps on. So now this trap, the strapping system is a bit different with these guys. You can see how the strap starts from this side with my two rings. So what I'm going to do is bring the strap up through the toe. I'll fold that all back. There we go. I get a little loop on this side, so I'm going to pass this through the loop. There we go, and then it makes a big triangle on my foot. I'm gonna go back to here, pass it through two, and then back through one. And then you do have to work all the looseness up to it. And then what do I do with this strap is I just find a place I think I would just do this. Just find a place to tie it off like any other strap. There you go, and then maybe I would actually put... a second knot in there. Just so that way it's uh, fully tied on. And there I have my 10 point grip on on. So you can see here that the cool part about strap-on crampons is they can go on any boot, like a full shank or just an approach shoe. And so that's kind of the advantage that they fit on any sort of footwear. So if you just have like a quick little bit of snow or ice to get across, and then the rest is all rock climbing, you can uh, get these strap-ons that work for your climbing or your approach shoes. And then if you want to do anything else, Okay, yeah, so that's just about everything I have to say about basic crampon setups, uh, how to size them and whatnot. Uh, last thing I'll leave you with is sort of price points. Um, obviously, with the uh, different materials and different uh, production costs, these ones are going to be more expensive than those, and then they only get worse from there. But you can think of them as rock climbing shoes, where you have your basic, intermediate, and advanced climbing shoes. It's sort of the same deal. These guys are going to run you about 80 to 120. These ones like 130 to 170, 180. And these guys are about 180 to 220 or so. That's um, sort of what you're looking at. But it is not bad to have uh, a couple different pairs of crampons depending on how much climbing you do. Uh, one pair of crampons does not suit all circumstances, just like the same as rock climbing shoes. And so I hope this uh, helped you out with some basic crampon knowledge, and I'll see you guys in the next video.